Hey guys, this isn't like my usual videos at all. I was making this for a friend, I thought maybe this could be useful for the rest of the internet. Uh, if you're maybe just a beginning modeler, or someone who's been doing it for a while, and maybe just wants to learn something new, this is uh, a little piece of information that might be useful to you. Uh, we'll be doing some ambient occlusion baking onto an object, as well as stacking it uh, with the diffuse into one texture. So one thing to keep in mind when dealing with any sort of light maps is that you're going to need two sets of UVs. And usually you want to keep light maps in the first set and your normal stack uh, diffuse UVs uh, into the second. And the reason for this is because Maya is going to go to that first set when dealing with the light maps. And you can probably change it. And I know when working inside of UDK you can specify which set is the light map, but in general, it's just easier if the first set relate to the light maps. Um, you might be thinking, doesn't UDK do light maps on the fly? You know, bake it before it does the build, and that's true. But let's say you're making a piece for a portfolio or maybe a class. Uh, it's important to do it just for presentation. I mean, it makes the piece just look way better. So, yeah, you know, good information to know in that. Uh, so, when you're probably making a model, your first set is just going to be your diffuse. You're not even thinking about doing ambient occlusion. And if that's the case, uh, it's pretty easy. So let's just pretend for a second that our second set of UVs were just the one UV set that we have. Uh, if you want to just make a new one, just copy the UVs to a new UV set so that both of your UVs would be set 1 and 2. And then just go back to the first one go to create UVs, automatic mapping, and then it'll be laid out exactly like this. The first one will be the automatic and the second one will be the ones that you stack. You won't lose anything. And you'll be ready to go by that point. So the next thing that we need to do is finally actually do the baking. So you go to color, batch bake using mental ray, and you have a shitload of options here. Um, it's easy to get confused by the amount of options here because, I mean, there's just so fucking many. Uh, the top part, not too important. I mean, you do want to use the bake set override because you need to tell Maya, hey, I need to do something specific here. If you don't, the options are going to give you are just going to be really low resolution. For example, the occlusion raise is going to be way down to like 64 or 65. And I mean, that's really, really low. We want to get really high quality. I mean, if we need to pull back on it, we could do that after the fact in Photoshop. You also want to make sure that um, you name your stuff. That's really important. So that you can go and find the file after the fact. Uh, the orthogonal reflection, turn on or off. I keep it on. Um, and then the X and Y resolution, it's pretty much just the resolution of the image that it creates. Obviously you want to make it big. If you need to scale it back down later you can, but if it's going to be for presentation, make it as big as you want. Uh, 2056 works perfect for me. I haven't had any issues. The only thing is it's going to take longer to render, but uh, that's not too big of a deal. You want to make it look as good as possible. Just do something else while it's rendering. Also, um, when dealing with this, you when you, go, you want to check out color mode and you want to make sure that that is actually set to occlusion. Uh, the reason for this is because we're doing ambient occlusion, it makes sense. And it's usually going to be on light only when you open it up. And yeah, make sure that the file format is probably Targa. Works best for me, I mean JPEG. Eh, it's not as great. As long as it's not 32-bit uh, Targa, those take up a lot of space. Um, when dealing with any sort of 32-bit image, you probably want to keep it small. And yeah, just make sure you use the color mode. I'm just leaving the options up here so you guys can take note of it. It's a pretty important part. And yeah, it's probably going to be set to only light when you open it. Make sure it's occlusion. If you do only light, it's not going to look good. And then once everything's set, you can just hit convert. And for the sake of, you know, making this go a little bit faster, kind of like a cooking show, I put the pizza in the oven. Two seconds later, I pulled out a finished pizza. Ta-da, I just pulled out a finished occlusion bake right here. And I also have my diffuse up here as well, so that I can actually show uh, what it's going to look like when it's finished. And also to show you what can go wrong, because 
If there's one thing that you'll learn from Maya, it's that you want to know what the hell's going on when something breaks. Uh, that's a really huge problem. Oh yeah, and down here, um, this is going to tell you where it renders the file if you can't find it. It'll be like, uh, you know, it saved it to blah blah blah. It's going to usually be in your uh, render data uh, light map uh, folder in your project if you can't find it. And now we want to pull up the hypershade. If you can't find it on the left, you can find it under Windows, uh, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade in the menu. And you want to go to the Textures tab because that's where you find your uh, occlusion and your diffuse. Uh, if the occlusion or diffuse aren't in there, just open it up in Explorer and drag it in there. Because uh, we need to work with them, and you need to have them in there. Make sure that UVs are still uh, set. You can put the occlusion on there and see if it used your first set of UVs, that's important. And now we want to open up a layer texture, just type layered into the search on the left, and then open up. Don't open up a layered um, material or a shader, because that is not what we want. And then just double click on the layer texture and you'll see it opens up some stuff in the attribute editor. Uh, the green thing is just a placeholder. Uh, don't worry about it, we can get rid of it. So then middle mouse click your occlusion over here, as well as getting rid of the green crap, and then middle click your diffuse over. And think of this area as like a Photoshop hierarchy. Things on the left are going to be at the top, things on the right are going to be down below. And this is important to keep note because just like Photoshop, uh, this has some blend modes so we can do things like uh, multiply or difference or light and dark. Uh, for the occlusion, we want to use multiply, and then on the second, we will only we don't you don't want to put anything on it. So turn it's going to usually be on over. Turn that off. Turn it to none. And what's also great about this is there's alpha slider, so you can turn it down. You can bring some white back in and get rid of some of the dark, depending on how much the occlusion you want to be on there. And you can even do it after the fact. So if you like put it on, it's too much. You can crank it down a bit. It's a uh, really great. You can stack as many as you want. Um, it's a really great tool. And then <clears throat> after that we want to create a new uh, Lambert. Uh, you can just find it right at the top, you don't have to type anything in. And you know, always name your stuff, it's a good thing to get in the habit of doing. Especially when you're just dealing with a lot of stuff, and you're, you know, if you have a lot of nodes in your hypershade you get lost. I mean, in general, just, you know, name everything. It's gonna help you takes like two seconds, just name it. So, go to the materials, double click on the Lambert you just made. You can also use the graph network if you want to do it that way, but just middle mouse click the layer texture we made and just drop it right on the color. And we're ready to go by this point. Um, all I have to do now is actually apply the material to the uh, object that you made. In this case, uh, it's gonna work for me because I already told Maya uh, exactly how to get it to work. So I'm going to show you what's going to happen when you normally apply it um, and what's going to end up happening to your diffuse. It's going to go crazy. The reason for this, oh, oh, make sure that your lighting is turned off so you can really see what it looks like. Maya's default lighting is garbage. Uh, it's going to just look really terrible. The reason for this is because it's using the automatically mapped UVs for your diffuse. And that's just, that's just how Maya is. It takes the default setting and just runs with it. So we need to tell Maya, hey, this is not the right thing. We need to differentiate the difference between the automatic UVs for the light map and then our diffuse stacked UVs for our diffuse map. So to do that, you go to Window, Relationship Editor, UV Linking, UV Centric. Open up a little thing here. Map 1 is the first set of UVs. And as you can see, both of them are relating to it and nothing is going to our second set and that is not what we want to do. We want to go to the stacked, click on the diffuse, and just like that it's done. Both of them are stacked on top of each other even though they're using different UVs. It works out just fine. And we can even go here and open up the layer texture that was open before and we could slide it around. Maybe want it more. This is what it looks like without it. As you can see it's really flat and with it up huge difference. Um, it's really just going to make your work 
look a lot better. And you can do this with anything, low poly, high poly, hard surface, organic. It always looks great because it just looks more realistic. Light can't really get into those cracks. It makes objects really look like they're sitting right next to each other. And I hope you guys found this useful. If you have any questions, uh, you know, put them down below. I'll try to answer them. There's one thing I know from doing 3D stuff is that when you get into it, you're going to have a lot of questions. So don't be afraid to ask. And I hope this helps someone out there, including the friend I'm making it for. Later, guys.